Welcome to a new episode of my series about GNU slash Linux and Ethernet. In today's video, we will explore the serial management interface SMI. And here is a small reminder where the SMI is located within the Ethernet transmission line. So the medium access control is one of the two interfaces between the MAC, the medium access control, and the transceiver PHI. So basically between the MAC and the PHI we have two interfaces. We have the media independent interface for sending the data from the MAC to the PHI or the data which should be sent by the PHI or to transfer the data from the PHI to the MAC. These are the data which were received by the PHI. But the PHI is a quite complex device and you can also configure it a little bit. And for this configuration or management, we have the serial management interface available. But the problem is for this specific interface, there are multiple names available. So I will call it SMI within my videos, but sometimes you can also hear the term MDIO interface, which stands for Management Data Input Output Interface. Or you can also hear the phrase MIIM interface for Media Independent Interface Management. So all three terms are valid, all three terms are used but they are all the same interface. So how does this interface looks like? Well, it's a two pin um, or two signal interface, similar to I2C. You have the MDIO interface clock or abbreviated with MDC, and you have the MDIO data signal, which is a bidirectional data signal. And here you can see a bus setup for the serial management interface. So here we have a processor or a Mac. So in some Macs, the SMI is embedded um, and can be controlled over the Mac. But for some um, yeah, Macs, there is no SMI interface available and the processor has to bit bang it, for example. These are both possible solutions. And here from the Mac and the processor, we have two signals, the MDIO and the MDC signal. And to this bus line, we can connect now multiple PHI addresses. And another important thing to see here is that there is a pull-up resistor on the MDIO um, data line. Okay, so on the SMI, you can, you can have multiple PHIs available. So there must be a way to determine which, to which PHI we want to talk. And this is done by a uh, 5-bit PHI address. So each PHI has an individual address from starting from 0 and the maximum available address is 31 or 1 f hexadecimal. So here in this example this PHI has address 0, this PHI has address number 2 and this PHI has address number 1 f. So why do we need this pull-up resistor here? So in case we want to read from a PHI which is not available on the bus let's say address number three in this example, no one of these files is responding and what the Mac will read back from the um, MDIO interface is all ones. And if you're reading all ones, normally this is an indication, okay, maybe the address we want to, um, yeah, we want to read from or write to is not available. And over the SMI bus we can um, do read or write trans transactions to each file. But what can we read or write? Well, therefore, let's take a look at the datasheet of an Ethernet transceiver file. So here I have opened the datasheet for the LAN 8710A file from Microchip. And you can see here, here is a chapter number four, register descriptions. And in here, we have uh, under a section SMI register map. So each file can implement up to 31, um, yeah, 31, 32 registers. And each register has an address. So we need also five bits to display the address of the register. You can see some registers are vendor specific, but some registers are also normed by IEEE for example, the basic control register is always register number zero. So maybe let's go over some registers. So each register is 16 bits in size. 
So we can read or write 16 bits over SMI. And with each SMI transfer, we are reading or writing to one register. Okay, so one or two interesting inter registers are the phi identifier registers. Because over these registers, we can read back which phi we have on our system. So this is just a ID number um, assigned to, to the third through 18th bits of the organization organizational unique identifier and this identifier is split into two parts so basically here we can read out the file id and then the system knows okay now this is the line 8710 file from microchip for example or maybe let's also take a look at the basic control register so here if we set um, bit 15 here, we would apply a soft reset to the phi. Or over bit number 12, we can we can enter disable auto negotiation. We will talk about auto negotiation in a separate video more in more details. Or for example here, bit 11 is here we can set the phi to power down mode. So when we are setting the phi to power down mode it won't communicate over the MDI interface and it will enter a power saving mode. Yeah, and these are some examples which we can set over the basic control register. And let's also take a look at one bit in the basic status register. So here over bit number two, we can read out the link status. So we can read from this bit if a link is, if the link is down or the link is up, which can be also useful sometimes. Okay, so I think that was a brief introduction to the SMI. Now let's take a look how the SMI actually looks like. And therefore I have prepared a little bit here. So here you can see my um, yeah, custom Ethernet PCBs connected to my Raspberry Pi. And here is the um, Mac card and here we have the Phi card. And over SPI, I can access the SMI bus and I've also connected probes of my logic analyzer to it. And my logic analyzer or pass view also supports the coding of MDIO for, um, yeah, packets. So here I have connected the MDIO and MDC pin. And now if I, I'm doing an SMI transaction, I can decode the protocol and we can take a look how it looks like. So I've set um, the trigger to the MDIO signal and I would say, Let's fire up an SMI transfer. I have written a small C program to control the um, yeah, Mac card over SPI. And this program looks like the following. So um, with the minus P option, I can pass in the fire address. With the minus R option, I can pass in the register address. And with minus W, I can tell if I want to write a value or not. I have set the phi address of this board here to 5. We will talk about how this is done just in a second, but for now let's say, okay, this is here is 5. And I want to read out register 3, which is one of the phi ID registers. Now here I'm activating the trigger and now I'm firing the SMI um, read. And now we can see here I've read the value C0F1. And here you can see how the MDIO, um, the MDIO frame is decoded. So the first thing here is we have a 32-bit preamble in which the MDIO signal is always high. In, uh, in SMI, the bits are latched on the rising edge of the clock. So even that the signal here is dropping here for some time to zero, this doesn't matter, we are all only interested in the values of the signal while the clock is, um, has a rising edge. Okay, what else can we see? After the 32-bit preamble, we have um, a start clause, which is a zero and a one here. Then we have an operation. The operation here is one zero and one zero stands for a read. 
we will execute a write soon and, you, and for the write you will see that this opcode is then 0, 01 instead of 10. Then the next 5 bits are the phi address, which is 5 in this case here. Then the next 5 um, bits are the register address we're interested in, and these are once again, this is again 3. Then we have a turnaround phase, because until now um, the MAC drives the MDIO signal, but after the turnaround the PHY has to drive the bus to um, pass the data here. And then the next 16 clock cycles we are transferring the data, which is C0F1. So let's also read out PHY register number 2. And let's see what we read there. We can see we are reading a 7. And if I take a look oh, sorry, at the datasheet, and if I go to PHY identifier 1, we see, okay, we all, we all, um, this 7 value is also specified here in the datasheet. So the reading is really actually working. Okay, so maybe now let's perform a write access. So maybe let's write the basic control register and set the file to power down mode. So for doing so, I have to write to register number zero. And I will, or first I will read it. And then I will set bit number 12. Okay, I should, <laughs> the only question is what is bit number 12? Okay, yes, now I know it. <laughs> so let's write, uh, okay, this is, wait, give me a second, I'm a little bit confused. Okay, let's take a look at the this data sheet here. No, I want to set this power down bit, which is bit number 11. This bit was auto negotiation enabled and it seems auto negotiation is enabled here on my file. Okay, so I will set bit number 11 and 11 should be 800. Okay, now let's start the trigger here. And yes, we can see now preamble is the same, the start clause is the same, the operation now changed from read uh, from read to write, yes, so 0, 1. And now here the turnaround phase is not, is not really important because the Mac is still driving the MDIO bus and then here we are writing um, yeah, this pattern here to the bus. Okay, so one remaining question is how can we adjust this PHY address? Well, therefore we have to take a look at the datasheet and especially at the pinning of the datasheet. So we can strip the value of um, the or the address over some pins here. For example, here. This pin, RX data free pin is also responsible for phi address number 2. Combined with phi address 0 and phi address 1, this configuration strap sets the transceiver's SMI address. And we can take a look at this section how to set up the SMI address basically. And here, yeah, here we can see all the signals which are relevant for setting the SMI address. And here on my board, we have some jumpers back here and over these jumpers I can set the SMI address. So maybe let's change the SMI address. For example, if I can set it to four, by just changing one jumper. But for in order to, um, in or but for now, this here will still work. But we have to reset the file over its reset pin. And I have written a program which tells the W7500 to apply a file reset to the file card, just toggling the reset pin, which is also available here. So here we have a reset pin, pin number 19, and this pin is just toggled when I'm executing this OR command. And now if I'm reading from file address 5, let's also trigger it. I'm reading back Fs because this address no longer exists. But if I'm reading now from address number four, 
now it's working again. Okay, maybe the last thing I want to do today is um, let's um, build up a link by connecting my file card to my router and then read back um, or let's see if this link bit or link status bit in the basic status register actually change. So give me a second while I'm connecting everything. So here we go. Or yeah, first let's read the bit before. So now I'm interested in register number one and in bit number two. So in with nine normally bit number two is not set. Here we go. Shift it by two. Or this value here, as it should be an or. Uh, and not or, sorry. Okay, so we can see this bit is currently not set, but if I'm connecting the cable, Okay, never mind. We don't need a logic analyzer. But if we read back the value now, we have a D here. And with a D, bit number two is set. And the file now indicates, okay, the link is up now. Cool. So yeah, this was a small lesson about the serial management interface and how to communicate to a file. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee and buy me a coffee.com slash for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.